Hello everybody, in this video we're going to replace the vinyl window on a soft top. After maybe like 10 years of use, it's going to turn yellowish like this one. So I already did this one and uh, I'm just going to go through the steps in the video on how it's done. So if you want to do it yourself, it'll only cost you maybe about $30 and about 4 days of work. There's only 6 points or bolts holding on to each side of the top. Um, there's a bolt here, here, and somewhere up here there's three of them holding this bar. And then, and then there's uh, the actuator here, that, there's another bolt, so that's four. Um, I marked it here with uh, masking tape. When I put it back, this is adjustable. I don't have to readjust it, I just put it back to this position. For over here, the bolt is a little funny. Uh, the top bolt holding this this piece was right here. It was right here. I needed to remove the engine, uh, the little piece of the engine over here, and um, and access it from here, or else the the little uh, fabric piece gets in the way. So one bolt is right here. Um, the bolt is right here. Don't remove this all the way or else it'll fall off. Loosen it and then it'll come off because it's a weird position. It might fall in somewhere, so just loosen it and uh, that's okay to do that. The screw that holds this panel is right here. I don't know if you can see it uh, right here. You see that hole right there and it fits down there. Um, on this side, there's, there's a cable that holds it together. Just unplug it and then you can remove the whole thing. Uh, the other side has the same thing, but there's no cable. So both sides has six points of uh, attachment. So a total of 12 points of contact are removed from this thing. And now I can lift this straight up. I want to remove the whole thing. So when I do the vinyl window, I don't have to just hunch over and do this. And I'm just going to put this somewhere inside and uh, slowly work on it. So uh, let me try and remove it. Okay, so it looks like you need to uh, lift it up and make it go over this little knob where the uh, seat belt is. Make it come around and put it on top. And now I think it's completely loose. So one more look at all the points of connection. There was a bolt here, here, and here. Three, and then the point uh, that you don't remove all the way that holds the panel is right here. And the swing, the push actuator thing is right here. You only need a few materials to do this. So I've laid out the soft top you're looking at it from the rear of the car towards the front. And I bought some of these, this stuff from Tap Plastic. This is a car rear window vinyl. It's clear. And the thing with this is it's specially made for cars. It has like a UV resistant thing. And then when you, you need to sew it on too. So you need to get some UV resistant uh, outdoor type of uh, thread so that um, when the sun's beating down on it, it won't disintegrate. It's really, I think it's really important because if your string disintegrates, your, your whole top of uh, the window will fall off. And then finally you need some black silicone um, sealant to make it waterproof so all the, all the edges you seal it so when it rains it doesn't leak through and you know, maybe you need to check it later. So uh, I've never done this before so let's get started. Okay, so I pulled out the, the I pulled out the vinyl, and I've cut all the strings. So there's two. It turns out there's um, I guess that's how they do it commercially. There's two um, two strings running along here, and then they loop down and catch one or something, and pull it back up. So um, if you just try to pull this, it'll be really hard. You have to do it one at a time. So the easy way to to do this is you cut all the way through in the middle. And, and then you pull out all the little little tiny nubs you see over here. You just pull them all out. 
this pre um, this makes it so that the string is not caught when you pull it it won't get caught by like a string and so you can't pull it out because it's bigger than the hole right so if you pull it out let me see if I can show you I pulled it out on this end on, on this side already and um, if you do that and you just kind of after you do that after you do that you can just pull this string and it'll just come it'll unwind if you're lucky I'm not too lucky there the string might be too damaged from the sun you see like this then you can just pull it out The goal here is just to clean it up a bit and just remove all the little strings. Prepping it so it's ready for you to sew in a new piece, new string. So I have the vinyl cut out. I put the old piece right here and traced it out along the edges. I cut it out a little bit bigger. Maybe I might need it for ease of sewing on there. And then these marks are where I put the masking tape to locate it. I put them all along the edges so that as I go along I can figure out where where the old one used to be. Okay, so I finished about one eighth of it. In the beginning I kept on breaking my needles and you can see my sewing work is not bad. I think it's acceptable. So I had some needles already and I tried to poke them through here and I didn't have a thimble so I used this bottle cap. It turns out uh, it's really thick and I broke a lot of the needles just doing a section about this long. It seemed pretty hopeless. Uh, looks like about five, six needles here that I broke already. So I actually ran out of the needles and I had to go out and buy some more. Bought these from Daiso. Uh, thick, thick ones for thick cloth. It's worked out pretty well. I only used one so far and I was able to do uh, roughly the same amount and it might last me the whole thing. So. I have the UV protected black um, black thread here and I also bought these um, little thimble looking things for my thumb. These worked out pretty well. It has a piece of leather here and a piece of uh, metal backing it so you won't poke through. This one has only a piece of metal, I mean a piece of uh, leather and basically I used the thumb to push it upwards here and then uh, use this one to push it down. For pushing it up, you try to find the same hole and push it through the same hole because if you try to, if you ever create a new hole, it'll take about three times the force and it's a lot harder to um, re-thread this whole thing. So really try to look for the same hole. And once you push it up, you have to align it and make sure it goes through. It takes some practice to find where the hole used to be. After you come up, you go back one hole, go down, and then go forward two holes, and then go up, and then go back one hole. So what you end up having doing is, uh, the outside will look like there's only, um, the, the threading is only between uh, one hole. So they're very short. If you look on the back, it will be spaced by two holes. So I'm, I'm doing this, this um, uh, something that looks like it go up, down, over two, up, down, over two, up, down, like that. Um, and it's just, uh, I don't know if you're supposed to do this. I just made that up right now. And uh, it, look, it looks pretty well, looks pretty good here so far. I'm pretty happy with it. I think if you are standing next to the car, you probably won't even notice. You have to come in within like five, six inches of this and really study this in, or in order to figure out that I hand did it. Um, so there you go. Um, I'm just gonna keep on doing this. This section, after I got the new materials, only took me maybe half an hour, I think. Um, I think I'll, I'll tie myself a little bit and we'll come back. I'm gonna do a few of these to just to show you how this works. I got the, th the thread on the needle. 
On the end I tied about two or three knots so it will uh, put it on one end. In the back here I have the backing material from the previous thing. And let's start putting a hole in here. So I start, start with that one. I'm trying to aim for this hole right here. The thread, I, I finished up the last one here. And the knot, the knot goes behind this one. I came back up here and went down here and tied a knot in behind there. So the new knot, the new thread, I'm gonna go through this one and then go down here on, and on the back, I'll come up on this hole. So let's do that. Give it like a little pressure and constant pressure and you just need some patience. And just, you know, wiggle it around a little bit. Don't force it because you'll break the needle. Only, only have a limited amount of pressure. I see that I didn't catch the hole perfectly. So I'm taking it out. Don't be afraid to take it out and uh, redo it. I'm lining it up again before I put the, the hole in. Go back on the same hole that came out of the previous uh, come from, from the previous string, going back down. So this is a lot easier. Going down is a lot easier because I'm I can accurately position the the needle exactly in the in the hole I did before. And so here, with constant pressure, and then down. So that's one, yay! Now there's like about 2,000 or something of these. And then uh, just keep on going. Be a long journey. There's these flaps along the side. I guess these are to uh, stiffen the the material up towards the middle, I guess, and maybe it'll bend this more at first, so that when this uh, when the canvas folds, it will fold this middle part first. I think that's what these are for. Anyway, it's very yellow, and this one's completely clear. That's great. Um, I have uh, started doing it along all the way here and the last position is somewhere right here so I finished about 70% of it and, and here did some calculations of how many stitches there are. There's about 605 stitches across the whole thing and I timed myself. I do about uh, about two minutes to two to three minutes each stitch. Um, 63 stitches per 10 inches and there's 96 around the whole perimeter. So all of that works out to be about 20 hours. Yes, it really does seem like it's taking that long. I'm working at this very slowly. Um, maybe like I don't know, um, maybe an hour is about this much only. Some things I've learned is that you should use one of these metal backer ones because I had this one, this leather one with a metal back and it just poked right through and uh, hurted myself and I poked myself about eight times, eight to ten times and it's not pleasant and I guess if I knew stitching the whole thing would be 20 hours, I might, I don't know. I don't know if I'll do it. I, maybe I needed to plan like four days of working on this. So 
I started this sometime uh, day one, three days ago. This is my third day working on it, full day. And um, I really don't know if it's worth it or not, but I'll just do one after after I gain the experience of these these ones. Let me just show you one. I'm gonna take this needle and try to position it right where the hole I want it to come out of. And then I use, I don't know if you can see through the window here, use my index finger on my left hand and kind of push that needle through. It's pretty easy when you can get it right in the previous hole. And then it's really easy to get the string tangled up, so make sure you align them all before you pull it. And then it's really easy to go back one. And then I, I use this trick of uh, when I'm pushing on it, it doesn't really go through because it's so tough, so I, I kind of like wiggle it around in circles, push a little bit more, wiggle it, push a little bit more, and then kind of change the position on my thumb pad too because if I don't change it around, it'll dig right through the thumb pad and poke me in the thumb. So there is up and down is one stitch. So wiggle it a bit. So you see here, right here, there's a whole bunch of string left. If you just pull it, there might be a chance that has a knot. And if there's a knot on the outside, uh, it's not very good, you'll hate it. So you, you kind of do this and straighten it up and then let it go through and that'd be nice there. So we did one. Let's do a few more for me to show you. Right here, I've anchored it at spots that I know um, it's supposed to go. I did it about eight spots. I would recommend to do it even more, maybe every eight, 10 inches. Um, because right here, I, I went off where I was supposed to go about, um, I don't know, a quarter inch. And um, I'm hoping that with time, it will stretch this out wherever it's too short, it'll stretch it out and it'll look flat. It look it might look okay in the in the camera right now, but um, this is kind of wavy, and I have no idea what how this will look like after I put it back in the car, because it's gonna pull it um, it's gonna pull it quite a bit and and uh, strain it out. I don't yeah I don't know how that's gonna turn out. So um, at least it's clear. I find that having a seat like this. It's a lot more comfortable than before when I was sitting inside the, the window hole and that was hurting my back. So having a little tiny tiny stool is important. So here's what it looks like. You can see it's a little wavy here. Uh, I'm probably not gonna fix this because I'm too lazy. In the original one, it's pulled pretty tightly. So what happened here is when I stitched it along here, I didn't pull it tight enough. So if you want to avoid getting this ripple in yours, I would suggest to um, mark the, the inside edge here first and put that same pattern onto your, um, onto your new piece of plastic. So when you're doing it, you can, you can have a guideline on the outside. So, when I did it, I had I had the line kind of behind here, so it was I was trying to pull it every now and then and, and see. So I put a stitching here that actually uh, fit, so that's why it's a little tighter here. And then as as I was working along here, um, it didn't work out as well. So I used it for about two weeks, and it did rain in between, so I got a good idea of how waterproof it is. I did put black silicone along the backside, along all the edges, and just kind of shoved it in between and hoped that it's waterproof. I did test it out. It came out in several spots. There were, during the rain, you know, there were like two or three dripping points, but it wasn't very severe. It was just very lightly damp and it dried pretty quickly. 
So I hope you liked this video and maybe if your window is cracked, you try this at home too. So if you're a second chance, I did take a picture of the IKEA Kavarto uh, blinds in the daytime. So here's a picture of it. Thanks for watching and I hope that helped. And don't forget to click thumbs up for me and subscribe.